make a big noise playing in the street gonna be a big man someday you got mud on your face you big disgrace kicking your can all over the place singing we will we will rock you theo caldwell on in-depth radio news talk 1010 Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, it's absolutely the truth. This is Theo Caldwell. And this right here, way up on the maybe pile for names for this eponymous program. It's me. I'm back in person. It's been a humongous fortnight. You, not everybody knows you spell humongous with an O, so we pronounce it thusly. It's been a humongous fortnight. I've missed you terribly. I know you've missed me. I, I get the letters. I get the letters. And the theme for tonight's broadcast, as you can hear, is Queen. Queen, as you know, gentle listener, we have a musical theme to each episode, and we have a news hook for that theme, which we reveal in the by and by. This episode is no exception. Queen is our theme. We're going to tell you why as it comes along. Uh, A lot of stuff happened while I was away. Um, It was a celebrity-studded couple of weeks. Um, Let me give you a couple of examples here. While I was away, I ran into both... George Strombolopoulos and Canada's own Brian Adams. That's you don't get any more A-list than than, than that. Uh, neither George Strombolopoulos nor Brian Adams had much of anything to say to me, which is fine. Um, I maintain that neither one of them should be hosting Hockey Night in Canada, and that's just how it is. I also saw uh, uh, Eric Lindros uh, at Summer Hill Market, or just outside Summer Hill Market. Um, I don't know Eric Lindros, even though we're the same age. We played hockey, uh, not hockey, <laughs> uh, played uh, poker together one night. And, and like Frank Costanza, all I would say about that, about Eric Lindros, is um, this guy, he's not my kind of guy. But I'm told he's mellowed, Eric Lindros, since he retired and gained like five million pounds and he's no longer the it guy. He's found some humility. I don't know. But anyway, so Eric Lindros, so that's another celebrity that I bumped into. Um, also, you know, you know what another celebrity I bumped into was Anthony Fury. Anthony Fury, who was nice enough to guest host this show for us while we were away, and apparently did a, I was just reviewing some of the, uh, some of the um, what you call it, messages, texts, um, complaints, official CRTC complaints, and uh, Fury did a phenomenal job. Now I don't even know if I knew Anthony Fury in person. I know I've quoted his columns. He's an excellent columnist for the Sun, um, but we, I was at a party with him, like a real well-to-do, you know, dressed to the nines party last night with him, all kind, all kind of Canadian journalism celebrities. Was it Anthony Fury was there? Adrian Batra, who's, I guess, the editor, the, 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 the commissar of Toronto Sun newspapers now, and she is on here on this air. I think she is. I don't know if she's too busy now. At the home of Faith Goldie, the great Faith Goldie. Like, this, it was huge. It was, it was absolutely luminaries. And by the way, if you're wondering why this broadcast is going so incredibly well, we have nothing but a monsoon of respect for Patrick O'Neill. But he's not here. He's in Buffalo. I, I don't know. I think he's that, being held over till I can get a judge, get him before a judge, I think, early next week. So in the booth is Mark Tang. And as we always say, when you're listening to a radio broadcast and it seems that much more exquisite than any others that you're hearing, you know what people say? It's a Mark Tang. Like that, that's the sign of quality. Just look under the thing for the thing. Okay, so let's, let's get right to it. You remember what happens when I'm away, right? We have, first of all, I, I throat clear for like 18 minutes, which I'm doing right now. But then I have so much news to get to from the fortnight that we have been apart that I have to pick and choose. I have to use my formidable editorial judgment to decide what we should talk about. And I've done precisely that. And mostly, mostly I bring up things that interest me. Um, I'll give you the numbers now. I really, I really don't think, by the way, that I'm going to have time for calls unless they are so good. So good. So you can call me as we're talking if you're listening live. Of course, if you're listening to the podcast, just enjoy and you're welcome. You can call if you're listening live at 416-872-1010 or star talk, star 8255 on your phone. But more than anything, text me at 71010. And I swear to you, it informs what I'm doing on the program. Now, let's go back to Saturday last. Last Saturday evening, the man burned. Either you know what that means or you don't, but the man burned last Saturday evening. And last Sunday evening, the temple burned and there was an exodus. Just Google it. Google it. I'm not going to get into it. What stays on the playa, whatever, whatever. The man burned, the temple burned. All right. Monday of this past week was the 75th anniversary of the Battle of Britain. Now, this is really important. And, 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 
some people don't understand this and some don't. And I, I'm going to get into public schools in a minute because I, I got questions for you, gentle listeners, about the public school systems here in Ontario and Toronto. I know Anthony Fury was talking about sex ed last week. That's not what, that's not what I want to talk about. I want to ask you what it's like to have kids in the public school system. Um, text me at 71010. But here, just to, to sort of the camel's nose through the tent on the topic, the Battle of Britain, the 75th anniversary was this past Monday, okay? Without that unbelievable upset victory in the Battle of Britain, which frankly, the Allies, we, Canada, Great Britain, and, and, and various pilots from all over the Commonwealth and elsewhere in the world, there is no reason the Luftwaffe and the Germans should not have won the Battle of Britain 75 years ago. But I think, honestly, seriously, I think it was the grace of God that, that, that the, the, the sceptered isle was able to resist the Nazis 75 years ago. And I'm wondering, was the 70, I guess kids were coming back from school, but is that taught anymore? Something that happened just two, two generations ago. Our, many of our parents were alive when the Battle of Britain took place. And if it hadn't been for that victory, I would be delivering this excellent award-winning broadcast in German. Okay? You had... Gunners on the coast of England defending coast of, of a mile or more with nothing but a single stationary World War I gun. But just because of the English Channel and various strategic errors that the Germans made, and frankly, as, as Winston Churchill put it, so much owed by so many to so few. The Battle of Britain would have been lost, World War II would have been lost, and the Nazis would have swept right across Europe and won. Anyway, the 75th anniversary happened this past Monday. Does anybody know about that? Did you hear it any place else? On the news, you, you must have. Do your kids know anything about that important, relatively recent piece of history? Text me at 71010. Let me know if that's the case, okay? And then we're going to use that to go right into the education system. Just wait. It's going to be gangbusters. All right. Also on Monday, relatedly, uh, was the 86th birthday of Terence Breeden. Now, you may not know who Terence Breeden is, but he's the greatest pedagogue in the history of teachers, and he is the reason that this show is drenched in accolade after each episode because he taught me everything I know. He's forgotten more than I will ever know, and he's not forgotten much. Anyway, it was his 86th birthday on Monday. All right, let's get to more live and local news. Monday of this past week, and we're going to talk a bit about the federal election um, in Canada because I got, I, got, I got problems with this. But two conservative candidates on the same day were ousted, ousted from running for the, the conservatives federally in the ongoing federal election. Now, look at um, one of them, one of them had to quit because he was pretending to be disabled in prank phone calls. Um, and the other guy, for, he was peeing in a coffee cup. Yeah, look, you've seen, I'm not going to belabor it. You've seen this on the news. The other guy taking a whiz in somebody's coffee cup while he was working in the guy's house and, 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 and then whatever. Now, these two guys, these two conservative candidates, I don't even care what their names are. They had to quit. It looks bad on everybody right up to Stephen Harper, no matter how much he dismisses them. They were never going to win. They were in like Toronto or ridings that never ever we're going to go for the conservatives. But you've heard me on this before. I think the conservatives are in real trouble. I think we're going to see the right honorable Thomas Mulcair at the end of this election. And it's this kind of thing. This is just adds to what I've been saying all along. I think it is such a council of desperation with the conservative party. I think personnel is policy, not just these nobody candidates who are never going to win, but the policy guys, the guys saying, oh, we're better than the news. We tell the truth. The spokespeople for the conservative party, just the nasty pieces of work that you see all around Stephen Harper. This kind of thing. This kind of thing only happens when you have an apparatus like the conservatives, like the ruling Stephen Harper government that is falling apart. I know these are these guys, the guy peeing in the coffee cup and the guy uh, faking being disabled on the phone. I know they're not major guys. I know they're not, they're not cabinet guys. But, you know, it's just one thing after another after another. And that's why I think that's it. I think you're going to, I mean, the polls now, I've been saying this since the conservatives were leading or in second in the poll. The latest polls I've seen this week, they're in third or no better. Or within, you know, you got Justin in the lead, for heaven's sake. I'll say one more thing. We're getting back to the, the election later on. The, the, um, the, the, uh, the thing I hate most about provincial and federal elections is my neighbor across the street, who's, who's a, I guess, a decent enough guy to talk to, but his politics are absolutely repulsive, right? And wh whatever it is, whether it's provincial or federal, he always gets the lawn sign with the person's picture of it. Bam, huge size of a billboard right out my front door. That means I got this horrible woman who's running for the liberals in my riding and she's going to win. She's coming. 
I got to look at her face until after October 19th. I got to look at her face. And it's just her face is like, it's like five times the normal size, right? Because it's a billboard size thing. That's actually the part I hate the most about electric campaigns. Whatever horrible sign is going to be. It's like, I feel like Kramer with the Kenny Rogers sign out my window with this thing. So anyway, whatever happens. Um, yeah, and the polls, the last polls I saw, so uh, show a th- with all of them within one point. Um, you know what? I- I'll get back. I'm going to skip the rest of this. I want my Canada back, the Raffi song and all that, because I want to introduce the topic that I want to get to after the break. I mentioned schools. OK, now on Tuesday, the public schools went back and I- I'm new to being a parent to public school t- um, kids. OK, so I'm new to it. I have, as you may know or suspect, knowing my politics and the way that I talk about unions, about the public sector, about whatever, I have my prejudices. OK, and I'm going in there. I got the, I'm concerned. I have concerns and they've started to be whatever. So I'm going to have a lot of questions about what it's like to have kids in public school when I get back. But specifically, if you're listening, OK, and and and, and you have kids in public schools or you work in public schools, or you have experience in public schools. And don't worry too much about the sex ed stuff. I just want to talk about day to day. When we get back, I want to hear from you by text at 71010 or by phone at 416-872-1010 or star talk, star 8255. Tell me what it's like to have kids in public school. Is it like I fear where it's always work to rule? They're always on strike. They're they're like Air Canada, like they don't want to help you at all. And they they send your kid home thinking that you're the worst person in the world and that that Che Guevara was, you know, a wonderful human being. Is that what it's like? Because that's what I'm expecting. All right. Let me know. I'm, I'm seriously I'm using this airtime to solicit free advice from you, gentle listener. This is Theo Caldwell. You're listening to Theo Caldwell on News Talk 1010. You know, it doesn't for my money. And actually, I'm not, we're not paying for this, I don't think, this track. Then it doesn't get better than this. Bowie and Queen together under pressure. By the way, if you thought this was a Vanilla Ice song coming on, you better check yourself. Because this is obviously the Bowie version. But here's something else. Those of you of a certain vintage will remember that um, this, of course, the, the theme of tonight's broadcast is Queen. This is Theo Caldwell back. Um, Remember, there was some controversy when Vanilla Ice, the great Vanilla Ice, the monumentally underrated Vanilla Ice, sampled this song for his own Ice Ice Baby, right? And um, (laughs) you really, once this program is over, go to your computer machine and Google the video of Vanilla Ice defending himself. Let it it run, Tanger. Let let the track run. He he defends himself insisting. First of all, I wrote that track all by myself. Vanilla Ice averse. Second, it's not even the same thing. Bowie's riff goes dun 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 dun, dun whereas my riff, on the other hand, goes dun 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 dun, dun pooch. No, just do yourself a favor. Uh, yeah, so the theme of tonight's broadcast is Queen, and uh, this is the reason, of course, uh, that we are playing. It's no. not the same bass line. Yeah, there you go. Uh, like it goes ding 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 ding. That's the way theirs goes. Ours goes ding 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 ding. <laughs> yeah, it, that's, um, you know, Vanilla Ice, I think his place in history is secure, right? Especially after we playing that clip on, uh, on the air. Thanks. That was Mark Tang. Right. That was quick, man. You're so quick on the draw. Uh, so Queen is the theme of tonight's broadcast. As you know, there is a news hook as to why we choose each and every theme. We'll get to it in the by and by. Now, before the break, I asked you a couple of things. I asked you to tell me if anyone knows about recent history, you know, last hundred years, recent history, because we just had the 75th anniversary of the Battle of Britain. Which out, without which I would be educating and entertaining you in German right now. And I'm getting texts from people, and I think from the tone of the text, older people who are saying that, yes, they were reminded by their parents and everything of what happened in World War II and this and that. Fine. What I'm not hearing is that kids today and the next generation understand the significance of something like the Battle of Britain and how the last century went. And I'm warming to a theme here that I've also asked you about, and I've got some good texts already at 71010. Text me. I don't know if I'm going to have time to talk, but text me, 71010. Um, I've asked you what it's like to have kids in public school, because I'm like a week into it, not even a full week, four days into it, because school started on Tuesday. And I'm going into it. I'm trying to be up, upbeat. Like, uh, the, our, our eldest got into, like, the smart kids' private school, but didn't want to go. So I'm like, fine, you know, whatever. I'm not going to force the, if you don't want to go, that's fine. Because, you know, it's a whole, you know how it is with teenagers, like the friends and this, fine, good, good, good. Whatever makes you happy, great. 
But I'm, I'm watching very closely and I'm sort of on high alert. I'm on like DEFCON 2 for a bunch of political correct crap to come home and it's already started. Um, I'm hearing about students at York University. Well, that's not really the same thing, but the same idea. Continuous interruptions, uh, work to rule. We're talking about work to rule here. Um, but let me give you some more specifics as to what I want to know about and what I've seen so far as a brand new parent in the public school system here in Ontario, okay? I mentioned the attitude. It's not bad. It's not like anyone's been mean. People have been nice. But, but they seem like when you even come to ask an administrator or a teacher a question, they sort of back. It's almost imperceptible. They back up like someone at an Air Canada counter. Seriously. Where they just, they, they assume the answer to whatever you're asking is no. They assume they can't do anything to help you. They assume that whatever it is you're inquiring about, you're going to need a form that they can't give you. Like something like that. So that's my initial thing. But then there's the politics, the, the PC stuff all over the place. Our, our eldest is in high school, and they. I was reading through all the stuff. Gym, gym class. It's called men's and men's gym class, men's phys ed, and women's phys ed. That's right. Mark Tang has given me the, the puzzled face. Now, when I was in university, you know, 17, 18, I got to university at 17 years of age to do my first degree. I thought it was, I felt a little squeamish being called men, like dean of men, men's this. But I guess it's fair. We are in university. We finished high school. Most of us are 18 or over. Fine. But we're talking about kids who are 13, 14, 15 years of age, and we're calling them men and women. Are we so PC now? And this is, again, in the context. I don't trust these public school guys. Are we so PC that even children who are even on a quantifiable basis, they are 14 years old. They're children. We say men and women because is, is no female a girl anymore? Do we not say the word? Is that the G word? We don't say girl. They're not women. They're girls. They're not men. They're boys. Okay. So, again... Uh, on the door, here's another one, on the door at the high school of the vice principal or some kind of vice dean principal, not the principal anyway, someone like the second, the, the number two I see, okay, I think it's the vice principal, is a picture of an Ontario license plate. You know, it says yours to discover, right? That's the slogan. But what this person, and there's only one thing on this person's door of her office, the only, but instead of just like a license plate, yours to discover, it says gender, yours to discover. Yeah. So I'm looking at that. Right, because I'm ready to be offended, right, and to be ticked off about all the PC crap. So I see gender, yours to discover. And I think to myself, really? That's the one thing that, like, the, the person in charge of this school thinks they have to convey is that gender is something we have to think about and discover. You know, how about math, yours to discover? How about grammar, yours to discover? How about history, like the Battle of Britain or whatever, yours to discover? No, no, no. Gender, yours to discover. And that is the most important thing. That is the one thing that person puts on their door, gender. Because we all have to pretend, like we have to pretend that 14-year-olds are women and men. We also have to all pretend that we're not men and women or girls and boys. We have to pretend that we don't know. Like we have to pretend that we're confused. And that's the priority of the public school system. So again, as I ask you, what, what's it like to be in or have kids in the public school system? These are the things that I'm starting to notice. Okay, what else? Um, oh, an aside, subjectively. On the first day of school, which happened on Tuesday, which is why I'm off on this, how many pictures of your friend's kids going to their first day do you have to like? Like, how, how many likes do you have to give? Is there a quota? Is there a number? Because I'm, I'm breaking my thumbs because I thought, and I want them liking ours. Like, i got to like everybody's. Um, finally, okay. No, two more things. Um, the forms that I get home. I've got lots. i got like a, like a phone book with the forms to sign, right, about lunches and no peanuts, right? Nobody can have peanuts. Like, right, it's like you need a hazmat suit if a kid brings a peanut butter sandwich. That's ridiculous. The forms I have to sign are written like they were written by a child in, in crayon. It, it's unbelievable. They don't know what to do with commas or apo forget about apostrophes. Uh, semicolons, they have no idea. And it's just the way it's written, it's like a child wrote it, like, a, like an uneducated child, like a child for whom English is a third or fourth language. And so I'm thinking, these are the people, I mean, obviously the English teacher's not writing the forms that go home. I'm thinking, these are supposed to be educators. And they can't even write a sentence. So again, I'm worried. I'm worried about the public school system. I got one more thing. And this one, this one, I was, well, two more things, actually. The forms include a bunch of mangled stuff about the girls, because it's public schools, mangled stuff about girls and, and girls, you know, helping them with math and empowering the girls. And it's what I remember from the years I was in public school, empowering the girls, ruthlessly punishing the boys. That's one of the reasons I was glad I got yanked out and put into an all, all boys environment at some point, because it was very clear to me, even like 30, 40 years ago, whenever it was I was in public school, how feminized it was, right? You're not welcome as a boy. You're the enemy as a boy. And even the forms bear that out. Here's the last thing before we go to break. I know we got a break. Here's the last thing. The classroom politics. 
my kid's science teacher, not civics, by the way, science teacher, decided to go unburden herself about Donald Trump. He's an idiot, she said. He's an idiot. The science teacher is saying. We're in Canada, right? It's not a civics class. It's a science class. And Donald Trump, a guy who's running for president of the United States, he's an idiot. On like the first day is what we got to hear. The topic was climate change. All right. And we're going to get to that after the break. But this is what I'm concerned about. The left wing indoctrination. Some some science teacher in a Canadian high school decides that Donald Trump, who may be president of the United States, is an idiot. And that's what they're teaching. So gender is yours to discover. Donald Trump is an idiot. Are we going to do any actual learning in the public school system? Let me know. Text me at 71010. We're going to pick up right on that climate change bugaboo when we get right back. This is Theo Caldwell. is Theo Caldwell on In-Depth Radio, News Talk 1010. You know, if Queen has a better song than this one, I really would love to hear about it, right? Because you don't get any better than this. You do not get any better than Somebody to Love by Queen. This is Theo Caldwell, ably assisted by the great Mark Tang in the technical booth. Uh, Tonight's theme is Queen. I have yet to reveal the news hook as to why Queen is the musical theme, but just enjoy this, right? Just go with this. Yeah. Uh, all right, look, before the break, um, I asked a few questions, and I'm getting a lot of lot of re- reaction. We're going to go to the phones in a second. I see you. Just just be cool. I'll be with you. Um, I asked you about um, history. If anybody knows anything about the Battle of Britain and stuff like that, the 75th anniversary was just observed. A lot of you are texting in about it. And again, you still you seem like older people. I don't know how I know that from texts. But, you know, some of you have pointed out that World War II was an important war that we had to fight against the Nazis, whereas World War I was a, a total waste of a generation squandering uh, human lives by colonial powers. You're completely correct. I, I'm, I am heartened by the grasp of history I see on my text board. 71010 is the place to text me. Um, but again, I, what I don't really see that young people are still getting taught that because as I've told you, after my first week as a public school dad, I'm concerned that all the kids get taught is Caitlyn Jenner and Al Gore and David Suzuki and Justin Trudeau, right? All they hear is environmentalism and we don't know what gender you are, so just guess. Um, I I don't know what to expect, and I'm not passing judgment. I'm not trying to pick a fight for once. I'm asking you seriously what it's like to be a parent or or a student in the public school system, because I've groused about it a lot as an outsider, but I've been a few days in it, and a few of my darkest fears are becoming real. Look, our kids are geniuses, so it doesn't matter. Like, I'm going to fix it when they get home. I just want to know what it's like. OK, text me at 71010. Now, the, the other topic I got to. And by the way, I'm, this is another show. I got to stay late. I can't read these like paragraph texts I'm getting and respond. I'll read them all. I'll stay late and text you back. But the other topic I got to was climate change, so-called climate change. And um, I was saying how our kid's high school science teacher decided to call Donald Trump an idiot because, of course, Canadian science teachers in high school should be talking about the U.S. presidential election and denouncing candidates as idiots, right, in, in ad hominem terms. And the reason, the excuse this person gave was climate change. Apparently, she thinks Donald Trump doesn't believe in climate change. Now, first of all, whatever Donald Trump does or doesn't believe, he's, he's gone 180 on basically every topic in the world, which is one of the reasons I think his candidacy is problematic. Um, But I'm concerned that all they do, all they do is talk about recycling and global warming and climate change and all that crap. But I got one more thing before I go to the phones. Kurt, you're on deck. Just keep the pine tar ready, buddy. Um, This was actually the week before I was away. Um, But I want to bring it up anyway. The Pope, this Pope Francis, um, who I've I've picked I've picked fights with on this broadcast many times. He has yet to call in. And, and, you know, the lines are open, sir. I don't know what you're afraid of. Well, we can we can debate in Latin if it makes you feel any better. Um, also, Usain Bolt, I issued a challenge to Usain Bolt to race me to 250 meter distance because I do feel he gets winded after 200 meters. And I haven't heard from Usain Bolt either. OK, I don't know what you're hiding from, Bolt. I'm right here, pal. I'll do it right outside the studio on Richmond Street. Honestly, I don't know why you're ducking me. What are you? You know, I'm not ducking you. I'm, a, I'm here. OK, anyway, let me get to the point. The pontiff. Francis, and I respect the office of the Pope a great deal, and there's a lot to like about this Pope, but there's a lot to be very concerned about. He declared a week ago, but I'm going to bring it up because an international day of prayer against climate change, climate change. This makes me crazy. Like, I believe that this climate change crap is religion for rich people. It's, for, it's religion for people who don't actually believe in God. 
The Pope, though, kind of has a job where people are supposed to believe in God. Why is he buying into the same crap you hear from Al Gore? Why do I have to hear it from the Pope, right? And it concerns me because this climate change religion is, is, is exactly that. It's not about the planet. Don't believe it for a second. It's a money grab. And what I like is the fact that the Pope declared his climate change prayer day the same day that the great Mark Stein's book came out. Mark Stein, okay, the greatest columnist in the world, arguably the best nonfiction author in the world. He's gotten so good. He has this thing called A Disgrace to the Profession. Okay, it's his new book. And he's writing about this professor named Michael Mann, who's an environmentalist guy. He's invented the fraudulent hockey stick, like the, the hockey stick where it's says the temperatures in the world stayed the same until the Industrial Revolution and they spiked up. Now, it's been completely debunked. And Mar Mark Stein um, said as much in a 270-word blog post. And as a response, this Michael Mann's been suing Mark Stein for like five years. And in that time, while he waited, Mark Stein wrote this book called A Disgrace to the Profession. It's about scientists just bashing Michael Mann and, and saying how his hockey stick is a fraud. And so when you hear people say, only scientists can talk about the environment. Yeah, that's what, that's what Mark Stein says. So he quoted every scientist he could find saying that Michael Mann and the hockey stick and the global warming stuff is a bunch of guff. It's a bunch of nonsense. So Michael Mann, who started this, and again, this is why I think Mark Stein is God's favorite writer. His book came out the day the Pope declared some, some day of prayer against climate change. I, look, I, I fear no man and only one woman, but I would not mess with Mark Stein for all the carbon credits in China. So wherever Michael Mann is now, I can't believe he's happy about it. But I'm just hoping that kids today get taught something other than gender is a, is a nebulous ball of confusion and make sure you recycle and don't bring peanuts to school. Kurt, go for Theo. I just want to say that uh, 40 years ago, I was a high school teacher. I've, I've taught for 30 years. I'm now retired. Uh, 40 years ago, we are talking about the coming ice age. Yes. And, you know, the earth goes through cycles. This bit about climate change, it, the man-made carbon does not affect the earth that much. The earth goes through its cycles with or without whatever man does. Yeah. No, well, I, I would tend to believe that that's true. I don't even take it a step further, Kurt, because I, I don't even need to prove anything one way or another. I would say to you, and I've said this on this air many times, I'm happy to believe that we have an effect on, on the environment. But I do not think that being insulted or being deliberately paralleled with Holocaust deniers or being, you know, treated poorly as is, as is the only move. The indignation and the outrage is the only move that those who want to control our lives using environmentalism as the excuse. The only move is to insult us. So if you have no better argument than that, then I'm just uh, you get no better than a maybe from me. No better than a maybe. And again, you are you've been a teacher, right? And I know for that. For, years. Yeah. And I'm for a geography teacher. Yeah. I and was I, there. Yeah. And I studied it. And I say that. The climate change is, is basically a, a money grab, and it's moving money around. The amount of, of, uh, of carbon that Canada puts into the air is so infinitesimal. It's so small. Mm -hmm. We should not be getting into this, except Kathleen Wynne and some of the politicians. They need the money, and they're going to they're gonna soak us. We're going to pay for it. Yeah, it's well, not true. I would, I would tend to believe, and I said to, to our eldest as well, I said, you know what, when I was in high school like 25 years ago, it was every single year. My mother actually pointed this out. It wasn't just high school. From grade five right through graduation, every single year, they had us studying garbage, as she put it. Every year it was garbage, recycling. So there's nothing else to talk about than, than this environmental stuff. And you're quite right. 40 years ago on the cover of Time magazine, the, co the coming ice age. And then it became the greenhouse effect. Then it became global warming. Now it's climate change. And now as Mark Stein repeatedly points out in his books and his columns, there's been no warming, no action actual warming in this country, in this planet, on this planet for, for 18 years. But I have callers and people who text me who've never heard that before, because all they do is hear Justin Trudeau and all the ad hominem stuff that gets said against those of us who even have questions about this climate change regime. And I'm just concerned about the opportunity cost. That is, what, kids are learning about this, but not about things that they really need to know to progress in life. Go ahead. What really worries me is there are people who want to leave the oil and all our, all our natural gas and, and everything in the ground. And I'm sure they drive cars. What are we going to do? Turn back the, the whole industrialization? We can't survive without these products. Yeah, pretty, you know what? 
Kurt and everybody listening, go Google Al Gore's house. Take a look. See if he's turning everything back to the Flintstones, right? See if, see if his you know, dishwasher is a pelican who looks in the camera and goes, it's a living. No, that guy lives like a, like, a, like a sultan, but he wants the rest of us, right, to be riding to work on unicycles because he wants, as, Kurt, as you said, wants to turn the, the clock back. Kurt, thanks so much for the call, my friend. You're very welcome. You're great. All right. Thanks, Kurt. All right, folks, this is way more than I wanted to spend on this climate change, but it always happens, right, when I bring it up. Um, I'm glad I got a chance to talk about the shock and awe Michael Mann is experiencing at the hands of the great Mark Stein, and I got to pick a fight with the Pope. Lines are open, Your Holiness. This is Theo Caldwell. We'll be right back. From Theo Caldwell on News Talk 1010. This is very seriously being considered as a title for the for the program, Princes of the Universe with Theo Caldwell and, and Patrick O'Neill or Mark Tang. But O'Neill's in Buffalo, screw him. Princes of the Universe, you and me, Tanger. This is Queen, of course. As you know, Queen is the theme of tonight's broadcast. I will tell you moments from now the news hook as to why. And this, of course, comes from Highlander. I could, you know what, I don't know if we've done a Highlander show yet. The, it won the Oscar, as you know, for the greatest film in the history of the movies. The Highlander. Just Highlander. Um, and I, you know what? I reserve the right to do a Highlander show and bring this song back sometime in the future if we have a news hook. Um, I should also like to say my wife knows Christopher Lambert, okay? Who I used to call Christophe Lambert, but she's like, I know him and he doesn't call him that. Anyway. Uh, yes, in fact, no, I love this audience. No sooner do I point out this comes from Highlander, I'm getting texts. This is from Highlander. Yes, I know, right? The Caldwell Army, you know. You know. Um, now, uh, I, want, I have so much news I want to get through in this last segment that we have. And I want to get to uh, um, a history lesson for you at no extra charge because I'm concerned about the gaps left, the, the gaps in our public school system as I've been discussing. So I'm going to give you a history lesson at the end of this broadcast if we have time at no extra charge. Let me fly through the rest of the news. One last thing. Um, and Mark, tell me in my ear if I want to talk to this guy because I don't have a lot of time left. What? Oh, he's got a question with Queen? All right, you know, I'll do that. Just Bill, um, Bill, stay with me for a second, bud. I just want to set this up. I'll get to you. Um, I was talking about climate change, okay? And I was talking about um, the federal election before that. And I'm saying that I think the conservatives are falling apart, and I have been for a while. Um, I see no joy. You know, I've gone below the hard deck, and I'm calling no joy when it comes to the conservative party. And I don't see them winning. Maybe I'm wrong, but it's awful. And the polls I've seen show them in a three-way tie, four-way tie with, with Tom, Thomas Mulcair's beard. So it's Tom Mulcair, his beard, Justin, and Harper. But I will tell you that um, Justin... If he's, you know, first or second in the polls, Justin Trudeau could be prime minister. But and I think he will be someday. I don't know when. But I was pressed in the week or two I was away. I was pressed to take a look at the interview that Justin Trudeau did with Peter Mansbridge. And so I did. I just watched a bit of it. And I, and I watched the, the portion in which Mansbridge like urges Trudeau again and again to name the first, th- the one thing he'd do. First thing he'd do if he were prime minister on his first day, Justin Trudeau. And you know what he said? Uh, this is a direct quote. Call the premiers together, talk about climate change. That's what he said. That's the first thing you do as prime minister. Call the premiers together, talk about climate change. Now, that's beyond weak, gentle listener. That's deranged. Only journalists and teachers, and I guess the Pope, actually care about climate change. Because the rest of us normal people aren't convinced. And even if we are, we know what what, uh, Kurt said on the phone. That, you know, what, what China and India and the rest of the world does is vastly more important than whether you have to buy those squiggly light bulbs here. OK, so the idea that not just that, that, that Justin Trudeau thinks this is important, Justin Trudeau thinks climate change is the most important. The first thing he would do that is absolutely unhinged out where the buses don't run nuts. But it shows how weak this prime minister, Stephen Harper, and his party are right now that they're losing to this guy or at least tied with this guy. With this complete defective, who, who may end up being prime minister. And I think he will be someday, somehow, back into it, whatever. Who knows? Anyway, that's, that's the move on the climate change. No more about that for this episode. But Bill's got something good to say. Bill, go for Theo. Theo, not only you thought that was a current comment by Peter Mansbridge was, like, dumbstruck. I know. Like, how do you, I was thunderstruck, if you will, to reach back to the ACDC. Absolutely. I mean, how on earth? That's yeah. the first thing. And then he didn't even end there, did he, Bill? He goes, we'll go to Paris and we'll go to the big climate conference there. Oh, okay, great. Well, Peter tried to save him more than once, but he just kept digging himself deeper. I know, I know. Here, here's my Queen question. Go ahead. It involves the members of Queen. Mm-hmm. Queen is the only band which each member has done what? 
Oh boy! Well, dude, you are gonna get. Yeah, yeah, no, no, Come no. on, man! This is a family show. I can't answer that on the air. No, you can answer this. Everyone has done what? Yeah. Oh man! Um, can you give me a hint? Because I don't have a huge amount of time. Go ahead, give me a hint. Involve songs. Oh, e- oh, okay. Each song has each each one has written a song that they have recorded on an album. Each one has writ- written a number one song. A number? Oh no, I did not know that. Okay, and I'll tell you the songs. Yeah, please do. Yeah. This, this, this is four songs for each one of them. Freddie Mercury, crazy little thing called love. Uh-huh. Deacon, another one bites the dust. Yep. Taylor, Radio Gaga. Uh huh. May we will rock you. Oh man, Bill, this is this is an, this is a phenomenal platinum level. Bill, just stay in line for a second. I want to give you some approbation, gentle listener. When I tell you that to get on the air on this this way too short broadcast, you have to bring me radio platinum. That's what Bill just did. Buddy, thanks so much for that call. Hey, take care. You too, Bill. All right, that was great. That was worth breaking my stride. Okay, let's finish up because I don't have a lot of time and uh, write your congressman. Uh, this past week, uh, Tuesday, The Who postponed their first four shows of a 50-year reunion tour. Do you know The Who's been around for 50 years? Because Roger Daltrey's got something wrong with his, he's got an infection. And I, and I was going to do a whole Who show, but I figured I've sucked up to Kathy Shadel too much lately. I'm not going to bother. So anyway, The Who, hope Roger Daltrey gets better. Who is 50 years old? Um, okay, here is the reason, gentle listener, that we are doing a Queen broadcast. It's a double meaning, okay? I reserve the right to use a double entendre sometimes. On Wednesday, Queen Elizabeth II, long may she reign, is indeed doing just that. She became the longest reigning British monarch in history surpassing her great-great-grandmother, Queen Victoria. She has reigned, Elizabeth II, since February of 1952. That's 63 years and seven months. My friend Jerry Nichols gave it some perspective. He said her reign started around the time the federal election campaign began. (laughs) Anyway, the queen is 89 again this year. And God bless her. I I think that deserves a musical. Well, demonstrably, I I know it deserves a musical theme. Congratulations and thank you to Queen Elizabeth II, the longest reigning uh, monarch in British history. Um, okay, let's move quickly. Also in Britain on Wednesday, Superhenge was discovered. It's three kilometers away from Stonehenge. Superhenge, it's so much bigger than Stonehenge. Do you know about this? Mark, you didn't know, Tanger, did you? It's 90 stones. Some of them are four and a half meters high. I don't know what that is in regular. What's four and a half? Somebody send me, what is four and a half meters in normal? I don't know. I hate when European and Canadian papers do this. Nobody in regularly say, oh, look how many meters tall that is. What is that in four and a half? Four, t- okay. 50, okay, 15 feet. Is, are you sure? That, yeah, okay, fine. So 15 feet high these things are, and it's like 90 of them. Superhenge. It was discovered on Wednesday. It's way bigger than Stonehenge. It makes Stonehenge look like the ticket booth to get to the actual Superhenge. Okay, that was Wednesday. Also, uh, Wednesday, police detonate a suspicious package at the GO station. Um, I think everyone was fine, so I'm not going to labor it. Uh, Wednesday, also, some kind of report came out on taxis and Uber. This show has done a lot. We've talked about the taxis and the Uber a ton. And I've said... The policy of this program, leave, leave the, um, what should we call it? Leave the Uber alone. Okay. Leave it alone. But no, they can't. Politicians can't. And this report came out saying they need to have a new form of licensing, a new form of bonding, a new form of way to make sure that the cars are safe. I mean, Uber's working just fine all over the world. They add like 15,000 new customers a week. I think John Tory said something like that, or maybe it's a month, but tens of thousands. Okay. All the time because it's working, but government looks at the thing that's, that works in practice and says, I wonder if it will work in theory. Like, let's get on this and let's start regulating it. And that report came out. And this is not getting any better. I mean, John Tory wants to split the difference and they want to start regulating. I saw some spokesman, um, not my friend Alex, but some person who was a a spokesperson for the unions who drive taxi drivers, some young guy. He came out saying it's now the Wild West because Uber's not regulated. His his it was barely English what this taxi representative was saying. My friend Sue Ann Levy was writing about what the taxis are actually like compared to Ubers. They're brutal. Alex uh, Pearson, friend of mine, used to work with. I think she's on this air sometimes. She's speaking for Beck. And honestly, they should double whatever they're paying her because she has an indefensible position trying to defend Beck Taxi. Anyway, this keeps going. I don't want to make too much of it. We'll follow it. Uh, a couple more things. Uh, Tory, John Tory met was, uh, had a big meeting about Syrian refugees. I'm not sure why the mayor of Toronto was having meetings about the Syrian refugees. And I'm, it's not a rhetorical question. I, I, want to see, I want to look into that. Thursday, uh, TIFF starts. That it's on now, the, the film festival. My God, do I hate this thing. My God, do I hate the Toronto Film Festival. You're not going to hear that any place but here, but it's the worst. Festival films, first of all, are a complete ripoff. They're things you would not want across the street to watch. As Cartman says, they're all gay cowboys eating pudding. They're horrible. And there's no karate in almost any of them. And even the ones that do have karate, it's like ruined. Like it's bad. Like it's Shakespeare karate. It's not good. 
Anyway, I hate the film festival. Everybody else is so goo goo about it. I hate it. Um, two, 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 two more things. Well, one more thing and then the big story. Thursday, it was announced that Ronda Rousey, the fighter, who you know, the woman fighter who kills everybody, she is going to reprise Patrick Swayze's role in the 1989 classic Roadhouse. Now, if that were at a film festival, I'd go see it. Okay. Now, those of you who know me understand that I've devoted much of my life to the film Roadhouse. I will be watching closely to see if Ronda Rousey, with her one first round arm bars, can do it justice. I believe she can because she might be listening. I don't want her to hear that I don't think she can do it. Right? I'm actually I'm not scared of the Pope. I'm not scared to race Hussein Bolt. I don't want to piss off Ronda Rousey or Mark Stein. Okay, here's the last story. Gets to over a minute to go. Here's the move. <sighs> September 11th was Friday. We're at the end of the week. We did it. Okay, it was the anniversary of of 9/11. Um, now I knew it was coming. You knew it was coming every year, right? It, something weird happened. I opened my computer the first thing that morning, and and even though I knew it was coming up with September 11th, when you see September 11th printed like on the little dash the uh, desktop, it's sort of arresting, right? You notice it. And a lot of politics have come the last 14 years. Okay, people have talked about how the the government has overreached and the security state is too large. I agree with that. On the actual day of September 11th, I like to think of the actual people who died, who were murdered on that day. I don't like to say all the cliche things that, that I and others say because I think that makes the moment calcify and it should remain a living thing. These were 3,000 human beings who were murdered. But I want to say one thing about the history in the just under a minute we've got left. I'm talking about history, public schools, Battle of Britain, all the rest. Do you know why the Muslim terrorists chose September 11th? I'll tell you. Because in 1683, the Ottoman armies led by um, uh, Grand Vizier Kara Mustafa was leading the Ottoman armies who had been sweeping across Europe since the fall of Constantinople. They got to the gates of Vienna in 1683, and they, it was a matter of time until they conquered Vienna and thereby toppled the Western world and all of Christendom. But you know what happened at the last second? King Jan Sobieski III of Poland rallied 40,000 men of the West from Germany, Austria, Poland, and they arrived at the last second at the gates of Vienna to thwart the Ottoman invaders and to save the Western world as we understand it. Without the intervention of King Jan III and his 40,000 troops, I would be delivering this award-winning broadcast in, I don't know, Farsi or something. I don't know what language actually. Arabic? Whatever. Point being, it was a turning point in history, September 11th, 1683, when the Ottoman Empire, the juggernaut that had not been stopped at any point was finally stopped and the way of life we enjoy today was allowed to blossom. So the Muslim terrorists who attacked on September 11, 2001, they chose September 11th because that was the day they were stopped and centuries later they came back to it. They have a long-term view. They take this very seriously as you can see. So when I am say that I'm concerned about our prospects for the war on terror, I, I don't know if we realize the history behind it. I don't know if we realize how seriously we ought to take it. But on the anniversary of September 11th, I do offer prayers for those 3,000 people who were murdered. I like the way that we have not forgotten. It hasn't sort of disappeared. I don't like what the security state has done. But in a larger sense, boy, boy, I do wish that we would start to take it as seriously as our adversaries obviously do. Folks, you know what the music means. This has been an excellent broadcast. You truly enjoyed it. This is Theo Caldwell. Good night.